looking for affordable Windows or Office keys? Look no further, I got you covered. Head over to scdkey.com, pick your Windows edition, use my discount code LE25 to get a 25% on any Windows or Office products. Once you complete your order, after a few seconds you will receive your code. In Windows, go to Settings, there should be an Activate Windows prompt at the bottom. Click that, enter your code and wait for Windows to finish activation. To check the activation status, use the command prompt with the command SLMGR .vbs .xpr and you should receive a notification that the machine is permanently activated. Once again, use code LE25 at scdkey.com. Welcome guys to the second part of my setup tour. If you haven't seen part one, here is the link somewhere, so check it out to see how I got to this point from what you see now. So without any further ado, let me show you the things around here. So next to my desk I got this Billy unit from IKEA. This is where I store my various camera gear and actually this unit is pretty handy for that purpose. Here are the Edifier GX gaming headphones which I use only while gaming online and also if I want to play something on my PS4 as they are also compatible with consoles. I got here a Lenovo P11 tablet that I rarely use, it's mostly used when I want to quickly check something on the web or watch some video on the go. Above it I got the IKEA SCADI spec board which is sort of charging station. I got various chargers and batteries here, my favorite wireless headphones, these are the Edifier W820NB and you can check the review in the corner, perfect for relaxing while gaming or if you just want to listen to some music on the go. I got a cool flashlight here, this is from AMD and ASRock, my custom Xbox One controller which I use to play games on my PC various memory cards, USB flash drives and pens as well. I also keep these small items on these hooks here, like this multi-tool, some keychains, my smartwatch, this is I believe the Xiaomi GTR2 model, nothing fancy, gets the job done. Moving further, this is where I have my voiceover microphone. This is the Rode NT1, it's mounted on the Rode PSA One Plus boom arm and so far this is the best sounding microphone I have ever used. It's super crystal clear, it has no noise, everything is just perfect. You can check the review in the corner as well. Actually, I will have a link for every item you see here and I did review on every item mostly, but if I haven't, I'll leave a link. And I'm also using the Rode Pod mic occasionally for quick online meetings and for gaming sometimes as well. It's a great sounding microphone, it's great for podcasts as well, as it helps pick up the voice in that broadcast manner. So it's sounding fuller and richer and also it's built like a tank and it looks pretty nice as well. So hey guys, future Vlad here, so remember in the part 1 I told you that a setup is an ever evolving thing, so yeah, my setup kind of evolved once again. So I got the new speakers, these are the PreSonus Ares 3.5, I'm using them for a review for some time, so I have to see how they behave, so you might see glimpses of them in the video, but also the Edifier MR4 speakers, and I also got a new speaker risers, these are the Kanto SC2, so yeah, those are some new changes and enjoy the video. Moving further, these are the Edifier MR4 monitor speakers, these are an amazing pair of speakers for video editing and also gaming and consuming media. Since my setup is a hybrid between gaming and productivity, this seems like a perfect match. Bass and treble are in perfect balance on these and they have a flat sound profile which makes them perfect for home music production but also for video editing which I use them mostly for. They sit on the Kanto S2 speaker risers which angles them at the listener's ear for a better sound. But when I don't want to use these speakers or I can't use them, for example sometimes I like to edit videos at night when everyone is asleep, this is where the Rode MTH1 headphones come in handy. These are made for content creation first, but they are also great all-rounder pair of cans as well. At the center of the stage we have this amazing 34-inch ultra-wide monitor from Cooler Master. This is the GM34 ARGB model which sports quantum dot display and 3440x1440p resolution which makes it perfect for gaming but again video editing and productivity in general as I can put more things on the screen at once. The quantum dot layer helps a lot with color accuracy and the 1440p resolution is just perfect for this size as it's not too taxing on the PC as well. Oh, and it's also 144 Hz, so gaming is a pleasure on it. The ARGB part of the name is this awesome stand with integrated RGB lights in it. It's in the shape of the Cooler Master logo, and you can of course turn this off that is, if that is not your thing. Anyhow, it looks cool and it's made from metal. The only reason I don't want to mount the monitor on the 
arm, for example, is this stand. I also keep my Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface here, although it's not in use anymore because it is replaced with the Broadcaster Pro 2, but still I like to keep it here as it is such a lovely and good looking device. If you guys want a review of this device, let me know as I never did review it, but I see that many people use it. It's not expensive and it produces great sound and it has two XLR microphone or line inputs as well. So if you want the review, just let me know. Now we come to the Rode Rodecaster Pro 2. This is such an epic device that literally changed the way I record my videos in the first place and secondly it actually took a role of the complete sound production here as well as routing various microphones I got hooked simultaneously on it all the time. Whether I use them for gaming or work this thing does the job impeccably and has so many features as well. Like these funny effects and such. I'll explain the process of my work in the part 3, so stay tuned for that and with some news as well for a podcast which has been in the making for so long with a buddy of mine, it's a techtuber also, you may know him as PC Crazy, so go check out his channel as well. So my keyboard of choice here is the Keychron C2, it's a hot swappable keyboard, I modded it with foam and the tape mods, it also has the Aqua Jelly black loop switches with custom Keychron PBT white, grey and blue accented keycaps that matches perfectly with my chair and the felt pad by Delta Hub. The only mismatching thing is the cable mod coil cable because before these keycaps I had a retro orange keycap set, so no worries, I will change the cable soon for a matching color one. This is the light grey felt pad by Delta Hub, it's super comfy on your hands and it looks nice. I was against it, somehow it looked strange to me, that is until I tried it, so it now has become my go-to mouse pad. Same goes for this thing, this is the Carpio 2.0 also from Delta Hub. This thing keeps your wrist in a natural position so you don't get wrist injuries. Honestly I thought this was a big gimmick like what in the heck is this, it does look cool but I thought it's just for aesthetics more than function. But now I can't use the mouse without it, not only that it keeps my wrist in natural position, my hand does not hurt even after hours of use, heck I even did not know I had wrist pain before but it also makes mouse moving so easy as your whole arm is just sliding across the mouse pad along with the mouse. Speaking of which, I am currently using the Asus ROG Carries, this one is a hot swappable mouse, if the review is not out by the time this video comes out, it will be guys, it's a lightweight wireless mouse with ergo shape and insane battery life. Here is the thing that I don't know how I lived before it, this is the Kingston workflow station, it consists of a dock in which you plug these mini card readers. There are various ones like the SD card reader, additional USB-A and Type-C ports, there are also mini SD card readers as well. Cool thing about this device is that you can take this individual mini reader and use them separately on a laptop or another PC. And above all this thing is super fast, transfer speeds are through the roof. Oh and super cool thing that it was not meant for but can be used is for the external SSD drives or the NVMe enclosures. They fit here perfectly so from time to time I use it to transfer files to the external drives as well. Alright, we now come to the heart of the setup. This is my gaming and editing beast that runs the channel. So this is a Lian Lee Lancol 3 case with a custom water cooling loop with parts from the Alpha Cool company. The idea for this PC was to have a machine that is capable of running all the latest games, which I don't have the time for, but it also needed to be capable of handling 4K video editing in real time. So for the task at hand it has i9-12900K CPU, 64GB of DDR5 Kingston Fury Beast RAM, MSI Z690 Force Wi-Fi board, it has 5 NVMe drives, yeah I know I'm nuts but I needed them for video editing and storing files. It also has 3 SSD drives which are storage monsters, it has Crucial MX500, ADATA SU630 and Samsung 870QVO which is mainly used for storing non-demanding games. The GPU that is powering it all is the Palit RTX 3090 Gaming Pro OC with the Alphacool Iceblock GPX full power block. Cables are custom made by Cable Mod, and I would like to thank all the sponsors involved with this machine, you guys are awesome and I would not have done it without you, but also not without you guys watching this, so it's a mutual respect thing. Behind my PC there is a Sabrent 4 bay hard drive docking station, this houses 4 4TB hard drives that are mainly used as a backup to all the videos that I produce. So far this is just barely enough storage, it's filling up real fast, so I guess I will need to look for something else in the future, I mean adding bigger storage that is. 
here is the latest addition to the setup. This is the Devoom Pixel 64. It's basically a pixelated display that can display various stats like for the YouTube channel, some cool animations, it can serve as an animated clock and weather display. It's a nice thing to have in your setup, basically it doesn't do much except being a cool gadget. Moving further, shelves above my setup is where I keep my knickknacks, such as this flying DeLorean from Back to the Future, which was also used in Cooler Master Back to the Future Tribute PC. I also got this cool little device, this is the Devoom D2, it's a Bluetooth speaker with pixelated screen which also has some cool games on it and it looks like a retro PC. Shelves above my PC are used again for various items that I have to display, it's like some boxes from game changing CPUs, vintage lens, Batman is here too, this unusual looking gadget here is the Mars Bluetooth speaker from Gravastar, above that I got the legend itself, it's the Noctua NHD 15 cooler and some GPU boxes as well. Next shelf above the B-roll recording area is used to hold various lights from Godox and Nanlite, more on this in part 3, but I also have my top-down camera that is mounted here. This makes it so easy to record top-down shots while displaying products and doing unboxings. It's easily removable and it's sturdy held in place as well. Cool thing is that it's separated from the desk, so if I accidentally bang on the desk and such, the camera is not shaken. Alrighty then, moving to the TV and console area, I got a 42 inch LG TV here that is past due replacement so anytime soon I will have a 50 or 55 inch TV here, honestly I don't need anything bigger but I do need 4K so the time has come. I have the PS3 here with fully modded custom firmware and all the exclusive games that mark the PS3 era. Next to it is the PS4 Pro, I still use this one and I also plan to get a PS5 in the future. I got a mini PC here from Geekom, this is used actually as an HD PC to run movies and TV shows directly connected to my Denon AVR and then to these gigantic magnet speakers which is actually my custom 5.1 setup. Front speakers are obnoxiously and utterly overkill for this room size, my back speakers are actually front bookshelf variants. I know it's a total overkill but once the movie starts or you play a game you can feel the action, you can feel every shake, it's like you are in the movie or in a game for that matter because consoles are also hooked up to this system. Helping in making the neighbors mad is the 10 inch subwoofer I got next to my sofa, this is the place where we all use to relax, watch movies and TV shows and play games as well. Also I like to take naps here from time to time. Last thing here is my chair, this is the autonomous Ergo Chair Pro or previously known as the Ergo Chair 2. I've been using it for 2 years now, this is a perfect match for my whole setup, the color wise that is, it's super comfy and after 2 years it hasn't changed a bit, there are no squeaks or such, it's held pretty fine. I did hear a lot of complaints about sitting cushion not being soft or thick enough, I can't say anything about it as I am so so slim and light as a feather, maybe the problems are with heavier people, it's ergonomically shaped support and upright sitting position, I mean the proper sitting posture but crazy as I am I like to sit with my legs on the desk leaned back and using my PC in the most unnatural position possible, exactly like this meme here. So this was the tour of my room and setup, as I said in part 1 this is an ever evolving thing and I have some future plans for it as well. Maybe I will change these large speakers for something smaller as these take up a lot of pressure space that I need for various lights and filming equipment. I want to add a desktop monitorizer and I don't like any of the pre-made stuff so I think that I will make my own. I still haven't figured it out completely how I want it. I think I have enough RGB LED lights around, maybe even more than needed, but they do look cool so I think I won't be changing those. The TV will be replaced for a bigger one and better pretty soon, PS5 will be here someday as well, but honestly I don't have time for consoles that much and since almost all Sony games are now available on PC and future ones will be, I am pausing that purchase for a while. Oh and perhaps I might paint the wall behind the setup in some lighter grey color, this was actually a thought from the beginning but I left it in white so I can have a blank canvas for later, it's still debating with my brain on this one. Also installing some saddle lights on these shelves behind me would be nice so I might look into that as well. It is pretty obvious that I need bigger space, because when I start building a PC here things get pretty cramped up, removing the old closet from this area here did make space for a lot of other stuff and actually made it easier to shoot videos here. 
but overall I have plans for a bigger space up in the attic. I'm working on making that dream come true one day, but for now I gotta work with what I have here. I would not be even here without you guys watching and subscribing to the channel, so huge thanks on that. We currently have passed 5k last month, it's a small milestone, but we did this together on this journey. So if you can use this video perhaps as an inspiration for your own setup space, feel free to do so. Maybe you are a content creator or a streamer with limited space as well. So any idea and suggestion on how to improve your own space is always a nice thing and I hope I helped in some way. So this is why I will be here for the part 3 to show you guys how I actually record videos in this smaller space areas so stay tuned for that one in two or three days as well thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel like and share the video and i'll see you again in part three